Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 10th, 2021 legislative session of the Salisbury City Council. We have a pretty full agenda tonight. Uh, and at this time, I would like you to, to join me in a moment of silent meditation or prayer. Thank you. We have a couple of proclamations tonight and uh, Acting Mayor Julia Glantz will take us through that. Good evening, Ms. Glantz. Good evening, everybody. It is a, uh, a full month of, of months, which is really great, raising awareness for some really important causes. And the first one I'd like to bring your attention to is uh, the month of, for the month of May is Huntington's Disease Awareness Month. So whereas an estimated 30,000 people in the United States, one out of every 10,000 people have been diagnosed with Huntington's disease, a disease for which there is no known cure. And whereas Huntington's disease passed down in families from generation to generation and frequently occurring between the ages of 30 to 50 is a brain disease that causes a person's physical, mental, and emotional abilities to decline. And whereas Huntington's disease is often described as having uh, morphic uh, lateral sclerosis, ALS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's disease all at the same time, with symptoms suffering, including personality changes, involuntary movements, slurred speech, difficulty swallowing, depression or anxiety, forgetfulness, and impaired judgment. And whereas symptoms worsen over the course of 10 to 15 years with disease sufferers usually succumbing to pneumonia, heart failure, or other complications, and it becomes necessary for those individuals to receive full-time care to assist with their everyday activities. And whereas the Huntington gene is part of everyone's DNA, and it was discovered in 1993 that a DNA mutation known as Huntington's disease mutation, when a stretch of letter CAG repeat over and over, causing Huntington's disease. And it's important to be aware that when the DNA mutation, the CAG repeat expansion, as it is known, repeats too many times, it is an indicator that the person will develop Huntington's disease at some point in their lifetime. And whereas persons having a CAG repeat expansion greater than 35 have a 50% chance of passing this disease onto their children, often unknowingly. Therefore, proper diagnosis of the Huntington's disease through a blood test can help slow the spread of this disease. And whereas there are numerous trials currently underway worldwide in search of a way to slow the progression of this disease, and ultimately find a cure which would completely eliminate Huntington's disease from all DNA. And whereas the Huntington Disease Society of America founded in 1983 by Marjorie Guthrie is a nonprofit organization devoted to helping those affected by Huntington's disease live their best lives possible by providing those in need access to service, education, updates, and healthcare context. And whereas understanding this illness will help guarantee hope for a better future with people with Huntington's disease. Now, therefore, I, Julia Glantz, City Administrator of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim May 2021 as Huntington's Disease Awareness Month. And I would like to note that uh, this, this does hit home for uh, some, some of our folks um, uh, in, in the mayor's office, um, and uh, we are certainly uh, thinking about them this month and always, uh, but hopefully we can uh, find a disease, uh, um, a uh, um, a cure for this disease, um, so we don't have to have to face the the struggles that come with it. Thank you. So our uh, next proclamation is for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, whereas Asian American and Pacific Islander A API Heritage Month is observed annually each May to recognize the the influence and contributions of Asian American and Pacific Islander Americans to the history, culture, and achievements of the United States. And whereas Congress in 1992 designated the uh, month of May each year as AAPI Heritage Month so that the observance would commemorate the arrival of the first Japanese immigrants to the United States on May 7th, 1843, as well as the anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10th, 1869, where the majority of workers who laid the tracks were Chinese immigrants. And whereas Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have shaped our nation's history and enriched our communities through their knowledge and talents, 
yet all too often have been the target of racism and violence. And whereas recent studies have shown that one in every four Asian American and Pacific Islander has experienced some sort of hate crime or violence in their lives, with one in 10 of the AAPI community having at least one of these experiences in 2021 thus far. And whereas the city of Salisbury stands in solidarity with the AAPI community and firmly denounces any hate or violence directed at this community or any other community because the city is committed to recognizing the dignity of all people and reaffirming commitments to diversity, inclusive, inclusivity, and tolerance. And whereas the city of Salisbury prides itself on being a place where all are welcome, all are equal, and all deserve to live, a free, live free of discrimination and violence because all people deserve the basic principles of equity and human rights guaranteed in the constitution. Now, therefore, I, Julia Glantz, City Administrator of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim May 2021 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And uh, I would like to note that the city, um, uh, we are trying to beef up our efforts in uh, educating the community uh, in Salisbury and beyond and have a website that has a ton of really great resources that Caroline O'Hare and Becca Brown put together um, in a similar uh, way that we uh, celebrated uh, Black History Month as well. So I invite everybody to go check that out uh, on our homepage. And um, we look forward to um, expanding our, our connections with our Asian community. I, I would like to note that three out of the top five languages spoken other than English in Salisbury and Wicomico County are Asian and uh, Pacific Islander languages, which is pretty cool to think about uh, after uh, Spanish and Haitian Creole. So, all right, our next one is, uh, for Police Week. So whereas there are more than 8,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the City of Salisbury Police Department, and whereas there have been 56,034 assaults against law enforcement officers in 2019, resulting in approximately 17,188 injuries, and whereas more than 22,600 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and died in the line of duty since the first recorded death in 1786. And the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, DC. And whereas new names of 394 fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 295 officers who died in 2020 and 99 officers who died in the previous year. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers who died in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund 33rd Annual Candlelight Vigil the evening of May 13th, 2021. And whereas the annual candlelight vigil is part of the National Police Week, which takes place this year, May 9th through 15th, 2021, with May 15th designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families and a time when the United States flag should be flown at half mask. Now, therefore, I, Julia Glantz, City Administrator of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim May 9th through 15th, 2021 as Police Week in our city. And I do find it fitting that uh, we're, we're recognizing this week today after um, thousands of officers and community members came together uh, to celebrate the life of, of Corporal Hecook from uh, Delmar. And if you got a chance to attend or watch the news, it was an absolutely incredible uh, celebration of his life. And I, I certainly appreciated learning uh, more about the Corporal from uh, his family and friends and their remarks. But uh, I do want to extend a thank you to uh, the police department, the fire department, uh, and all of the other um, agencies that helped to pull off uh, quite the operation uh, today and kept it all um, smooth and I'm sure um, made the, uh, the corporal's family and friends um, quite happy with what was, was, was shown today. All right, and I have one more for us. Uh, oh, um, I do think Chief Duncan is here if, if she wants to say anything on that, or we can come back if she's not here. I'm here. Hey, Chief. Hey, thank you so much for um, uh, 
reading that proclamation in honor of National Police Week. And uh, special thanks to everyone who uh, attended Corporal uh, Delmar, Police Department Corporal Keith he cooks funeral services today. Uh, thank you for all keeping both the corporal and his family, and of course, the Del Mar Police Department and the Del Mar community in your thoughts and prayers. All of that was very much appreciated. And um, once again, uh, to our city administrator, thank you for taking the moment to uh, recognize um, everyone in law enforcement and uh, of course, you're absolutely right today. We had um, representatives from 37 different states in attendance today. So uh, to come and pay their respects, including fire and EMS personnel and dispatch personnel and civilian members of police departments uh, from many corners of the country. So thank you all very much appreciated. Thanks, Chief. Alrighty, and our last proclamation this evening is for Emergency Medical Services Week. Whereas Emergency Medical Services is a vital public service and the city of Salisbury is committed to ensuring the safety and security of its citizens. And whereas the members of the Salisbury City Emergency Medical Services are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness and injury. And whereas emergency medical services have grown to fill a gap by providing important out of hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow up care and access to telemedicine. And whereas emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other out-of-hospital medical care providers. And whereas the members of the Sol uh, City of Salisbury Emergency Medical Services, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designate, designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now, therefore, I, Julia Glantz, City Administrator of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim May 16th through 22nd, 2021 as Emergency Medical Services Week. And I would like to recognize, we've got a few folks from the fire department on here, Chief Toll, Chief Gladwell, uh, Captain Truett, um, so I, I do want to offer John the opportunity to uh, share a few words, uh, if you'd like. Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity, but I would actually like to offer the time to Captain Truitt. Uh, Captain Truitt is the person responsible for overseeing our very busy EMS service. And he does a phenomenal job with this. So if I could allow him a few minutes, that would be great. Captain Truitt. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. And thank you again, City Administrator and everybody for the proclamation for next week. It's, uh, it's pretty fitting that this year's EMS week is caring for the community. I think our fire and EMS do that day in and day out uh, between the over 10,000 calls we ran last year to the uh, hundreds of swift interactions that our community paramedic program has interacted with every day. It's pretty impressive the uh, impact that we do get to have in the community. And we're very thankful to do that. Um, yeah, like I said, last year we ran over 10,000 calls and already the first quarter of this year, we've run over uh, 2,500. So a lot of places saw a big dip last year because of COVID. We only saw about a 2% decrease. So that's you know pretty impressive based on everything we already saw. And yeah, of that COVID, there were over a thousand uh, potential COVID patients and over 250 actual COVID patients that were transported. So that added to the decon time and transport time, but we still, you know, the guys and gals did a great job of taking care of the community and they'll continue to this year. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris, for what you do too. Uh, you guys uh, have really gone above and beyond this year and uh, we, we appreciate it very much. 
Mr. President. I failed to acknowledge uh, the chair of the Human Rights Advisory Committee is with us this evening, and uh, they put forward uh, some some strong recommendations in the in the in the area of the topic of uh, uh, support for our Asian American community. Um, so if Stefan is on still, would love to offer him a moment, putting him on the spot and give him a heads up. Stefan. Thank you for putting me on the spot. <laughs> no, I think you guys are doing a great job. I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, we wanted to support other members of this community. Um, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen to um, what the community is looking for and um, continue the great work. Thank you, Stefan. We appreciate it. Okay, at this time, uh, I'll call for a motion and a second to adopt the legislative agenda. So moved. Second. I'll give it Ms. Jackson and Ms. Blake. All those in favor of the legislative agenda as printed, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair <laughs> votes aye. The vote is five to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. Second. Ms. Jackson, and I think I heard Mrs. Gregory. Good evening, Mrs. Nichols. Good evening, Mr. Heath, Council. On the consent agenda tonight, we have the April 5th, 2021 closed session minutes, April 12th, 2021 legislative session minutes, April 12th, closed session minutes, and resolution 3104, approving the appointment of Hannah Cicchini to the Human Rights Advisory Committee for term ending May 2023. And that's it for the consent agenda. Thank you. Questions or comments, Mr. Boda? No questions or comments. Ms. Jackson? No questions or comments. Thank you. Ms. Blake? No questions or comments. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. I'll call the motion. All those to approve the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And before we go any further, I'd like to uh, congratulate Hannah and thank her. Uh, familiar face to all of us. Uh, and. Uh, Thank you for your volunteering and uh, we hope you enjoy your, your time with us. We have uh, three public hearings tonight. Uh, first up, um, I will ask Ms., uh, Mr. Sullivan to present ordinance number 2660. Mr. Sullivan. Hey, Michael, the microphone's on mute. Thank you. Apologize. Good evening. My Good mistake. Evening. Ordinance number 2660, an ordinance appropriating the necessary funds for the operation of the government and administration of the city of Salisbury, Maryland for the period July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Establishing the levy for the general fund for the same fiscal period and establishing the appropriation for the Water and Sewer Parking Authority City Marina and Stormwater Funds. Be it ordained by the City of Salisbury, Maryland, that the amounts listed in Schedule A operating budget appropriations are hereby appropriated for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021, and ending June 30, 2022, to fund operations of the City of Salisbury, Maryland. Be it further ordained by the City of Salisbury, Maryland, that the amounts listed in Schedule B, Capital Project Appropriations, are hereby appropriated for capital projects. 
be it further ordained by the City of Salisbury, Maryland, that the amounts listed in Schedule C anticipated grant expenditures are hereby appropriated for the grants listed, and the mayor is authorized to enter into any necessary agreements or memoranda in order to receive and expend these funds. Be it further ordained that the tax levy B and the same B hereby set at $0.9832 per $100 of assessed valuation of all real property at $3.51 per $100 of assessed valuation for all personal property categorized as utilities and at $2.40 per $100 of assessed valuation for all other personal property subject to taxation by the City of Salisbury for general fund purposes, including debt service purposes exclusive of revenues derived from the water and sewer fund for debt service purposes attributed to water and sewer activities. And all tax levies excuse me, and all taxes levied by this ordinance shall be liens from and after July 1, 2021, and shall be due and payable as specified in Title 14 of the Tax Property Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland as amended. Be it further ordained by the city, excuse me, by the Salisbury City Council that a public hearing on the proposed budget ordinance will be held this evening at 6 p.m. via Zoom video conference. With that, Council President, I will turn it over to you to open the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, I would ask now that anyone that wants to speak regarding this ordinance to please identify yourself. And we will also include the other ordinances and the uh, constant yield tax rate. If you wanna speak on any of those items, please identify yourself at this time so you can be sworn in. I see a hand. Okay, Lynn, you need to get sworn in by uh, Mrs. Nichols. Hi, Lynn. Good morning, afternoon. If Yes, you've got your hand raised. It, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I have no choice. The answer is yes. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any other hands. So at this time, I will open the public hearing for ordinance number 2660. Okay, for point of clarification, my name is Lynn Bratton. I reside in the city of Salisbury at 303 South Boulevard. And I believe we're only talking about the total budget and not the fee schedule. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, I would like to challenge some of a little bit of what is being put in the general budget in the area of the housing community development program in that I see um, a lot of things being put into that budget that have a great deal of support in the community and I think they will do great things. Um, I'm just questioning how the funds are going to be generated to cover all of those expenses. I have no problem that we need to be doing those things, homeless initiatives, Etc. Uh, but my concern is where are we getting the funds to do those things? And um, if it's grants, how will we continue to fund them? Uh, if it's new equipment, uh, the new truck or the new vehicle, is the old one going to go out of service as indicated? Or are we going to end up with two in service um, and paying the, the, you know, the, the taxes and the tags and the insurance on two vehicles? Um, I was part of one of one of your hearings and and that was a comment that was made that they were going to replace one but then later in the comments it was we're going to keep that one and add the other one so i just have some some details that i think um need to be flushed out i trust you folks to make those those line by line um line by line uh, look sees on those dollars to make sure that the dollars are all going where they need to go and that they are being spent uh, expeditiously and prudently on behalf of the citizens and that there isn't um, that there are funds in the budget to cover them that's coming from uh, the taxes that we're paying to support that department and not from other fee structures. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bratton. Is there anyone else that would like to speak regarding this? 
I don't see anyone else. So uh, at this time, we will close the public hearing. Um, we thank you very much for your comments, Ms. Ms. Bratton. Uh, and uh, we do have a session tomorrow uh, and that may come up in the session. So uh, next we will um, ask Mr. Sullivan again to pre present ordinance number 2661, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2661 is an ordinance of the City of Salisbury, Maryland to amend water and sewer rates to increase rates by 6% and making said changes effective for all bills dated October 1st, 2021 and thereafter unless and until subsequently revised or changed. Whereas the water and sewer rates must be revised in accordance with the proposed fiscal year 2022 budget the city of Salisbury and the appropriations thereby made and established for purposes of the water and sewer departments. Now, therefore, be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the City of Salisbury that the water and sewer rate schedule set forth herein shall be adopted as follows. Section 1, water and sewer rate schedules. Se schedule 1, metered water changes in city rates, residential and small commercial. Minimum charge, $23.80 per quarter. Commodity charge, $3.55 per 1,000 gallons. Commercial, customer charge, $445.29 per quarter. Commodity charge, $2.06 per 1,000 gallons. Large commercial industrial, customer charge, $688.17 per quarter. Commodity charge, $1.65 per 1,000 gallons. Schedule two, metered water ch charges outside city rates. Residential and small commercial, minimum charge, $47.60 per quarter. Commodity charge, $7.10 per 1,000 gallons. Commercial, customer charge, $890.58 per quarter. Commodity charge, $4.14 per 1,000 gallons. Large commercial, industrial, customer charge, $1,376.36 per quarter, commodity charge, $3.33 per 1,000 gallons. Schedule three, metered water charges, Warwick Community College and Urban Service District rates, residential and small commercial, minimum charge, $35.68 per quarter, commodity charge, $5.33 per 1,000 gallons. Commercial, customer charge, $667.00. 94 cents per quarter commodity charge three dollars and ten cents per thousand gallons large commercial industrial customer charge one thousand thirty two dollars and twenty seven cents per quarter commodity charge two dollars and forty nine cents per thousand gallons sewer charges in city rates residential and small commercial minimum charge fifty eight dollars and seventy seven cents per quarter commodity charge eight dollars and eighty one cents per thousand gallons Commercial, customer charge, $1,110.26 per quarter. Commodity charge, $5.13 per 1,000 gallons. Large commercial industrial. Customer charge, $1,712.63 per quarter. Commodity charge, $4.10 per 1,000 gallons. Schedule five, sewer charges, outside city rates, residential and small commercial. Minimum charge. $117.56 per quarter. And Mr. President, the Finance Department has requested an amendment to line 82, striking the charge of $16.64 per thousand gallons and inserting in lieu thereof $17.63 per thousand gallons. Commercial, customer charge, $2,220.51 per quarter. Commodity charge, $10.23 per 1,000 gallons. Large commercial industrial, customer charge, $3,425.27 per quarter. Commodity charge, $8.23 per 1,000 gallons. Schedule six, sewer charges. Warwick Community College and Urban Service District rates. Residential and small commercial. Minimum charge, $88.17 per quarter. Commodity charge. $13.23 per 1,000 gallons. Commercial, customer charge, $1,665.39 per quarter. 
commodity charge, $7.66 per thousand gallon. Large commercial industrial. Customer charge, $2,568.94 per quarter. Commodity charge, $6.18 per thousand gallons. Schedule seven, sewer charges, sewer only customers. Number of fixtures, one to two fixtures, quarterly in sewer rate, excuse me, quarterly in city rate, $75.17. Quarterly outside city rate, $150.35. Quarterly urban service district rate, $112.77. Three to five fixtures, quarterly in city, excuse me, quarterly in city rate, $112.77. Quarterly outside city rate, $225.54 quarterly urban service district rate, $169.15. Six to 20 fixtures, quarterly in city rate, $162.07 quarterly outside city rate, $324.14 quarterly urban service district rate, $243.10. For every five fixtures over 20, Quarterly in city rate $66.84, quarterly outside city rate $133.66, quarterly urban service district rate $100, $100.24. Schedule A, commercial and industrial activities, for each fire service, annual in city rate $373, annual outside city rate $746. For each standby operational service, $300. Annual in city rate $373, annual outside city rate $746. Definitions residential and small commercial customers. These customers have average water utilization of less than 300 gallons in a quarter. Commercial customers. These customers have average water utilization of 300,000 gal 300, gallons to 600,000 gallons per quarter. Large commercial industrial. These customers have average water utilization of over 600,000 gallons per quarter. Average water utilization per quarter. This will be based on annual consumption divided by four to get average quarterly water utilization. Calculation of bills. For residential and small commercial customers, the minimum charge for both water and sewer will apply if water service is turned on at the water meter and usage is zero to 6,000 gallons per quarter. Only the city can turn a meter on and off. For usage of 7,000 gallons and above, the commodity charge will be applied. For each 1,000 gallons used, the minimum charge will not be applied. For commercial and large commercial industrial customers, each quarterly bill will receive a customer charge for both water and sewer. Then for each 1,000 gallons used, the appropriate commodity charge will be applied. So it concludes the purpose of reading the ordinance for tonight's public hearing. I turn it over to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, I will now ask anyone who wishes to speak and has not been sworn in to please identify yourself. Okay, seeing none, uh, I will now open the public hearing for ordinance number 2661. Any, is there anyone who wishes to speak on this matter? Ms. Bratton? Is this the rate fee or are you still talking about the water? This is the, uh, the water rates, right? Water, yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Sorry, Julia. <laughs> okay. Seeing that no one wants to speak, I will close the public hearing for ordinance number 2661. I'll entertain a motion and a second to vote on the amendment as read by Mr. Sullivan. So moved. Second. Ms. Jackson, Mr. Boda. All those in favor of ordinance number 2661 Excuse as me. amended? Yes. Um, first, we need to make a motion and a second to approve it and then a motion and a second to amend it. So we've got the motion and second to approve it and then someone has to make a motion to amend it in a second and then vote. Oh, okay, I got you, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry.
I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2661. So moved. Second. Ms. Blake, Ms. Jackson. I need a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the motion. Make a motion to amend. Mr. Boda makes a motion to amend as read by Mr. Sullivan. And second. And Ms. Jackson seconds. Uh, first, we will vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment as read by Mr. Sullivan, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The vote on the amendment is five to zero. I'll now call the main motion as amended. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. The chair votes aye. The vote on ordinance number 2661 is five to zero. I'll ask Mr. Sullivan now to present ordinance number 2662. Thank you. And just to clarify, Mr. President, that was a motion to approve ordinance number 2661 as amended, right? As amended, correct. Thank you. And that will be held for second reader two weeks from today, correct? Correct. Thank you. Ordinance number 2662 is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury, Maryland to set fees for fiscal year 2022 and thereafter unless and until subsequently revised or changed. Whereas the fees charged by the city of Salisbury are reviewed and then revised in accordance with the adoption of the fiscal year 2022 budget of the city of Salisbury. Whereas the fee amount set forth in FY 2022 fee schedule, test year two and incorporated herein as exhibit one, identify and list all fee amounts to be charged and otherwise assessed by the city of Salisbury for the period of the fiscal year 2022 in accordance with the adoption of the fiscal year 2022 budget of the city of Salisbury. Whereas some fee amounts to be charged and otherwise assessed by the city of Salisbury in fiscal year 2022 may have been inadvertently omitted from the FY 2022 fee schedule attached year two and incorporated here in as exhibit one. Then any fee amount not listed in the said FY 2022 fee schedule shall be and remain the fee amount set forth in the city of Salisbury Municipal Code. Now therefore be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the City of Salisbury as follows. Section one, the fee amount set forth in FY 22 fee schedule attached here to as exhibit one incorporated herein is if fully set forth in this section one are hereby adopted by the Council of the City of Salisbury. And furthermore, the fee amount set forth in FY 22 fee schedule shall supersede the corresponding fee amount set forth in the City of Salisbury Municipal Code until one or more such fee amounts are subsequently amended. And Mr. President, I bring to your attention a request from the Department of Finance to add the following fees to the end of the FY 2022 fee schedule set forth as Exhibit 1 attached to and incorporated within Ordinance Number 2662. They are as follows. Fees attributable to the sale of consumer fireworks. Standalone tent, stand or other commercial space predominantly utilized for the sale of consumer fireworks, $250 fee. Other commercial space predominantly utilized for the sale of goods other than consumer fireworks, $125 fee. That is all I have for purposes of tonight's public hearing, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, at this time, I will ask anyone wishing to speak that has not been sworn in to please identify yourself. Seeing none, uh, I will open the public hearing for ordinance number 2662. Anyone interested in speaking regarding this ordinance, please identify yourself. Ms. Braddon. You're on mute. Nobody has said that to me the whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, 
No problem. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on the, the rent, the uh, fee schedules. Um, I'm specifically looking at the fee increase from 60 to $75 in the rental area in the housing and community development uh, department. It, it is looking to be a rent increase, not only on the license charge to each of the rent, the owners and property managers of build, buildings, but also on the annual renewals for each of those properties from 60 to $75 a year. First of all, I just wanna say it's been a rough year for everybody. And it's been especially rough year for, for many of the landlords. Um, courts have been closed. We've, we've, we've maintained a lot of our, our clients with uh, a lot of work trying to get grants and trying to get them to apply for grants and, and that sort of thing. But it's been a tough year all around for everybody. The cost of maintenance equipment has gone up. The price of lumber has gone through the roof. Uh, even getting people to go into houses has cost more to fix things because the, of the fear and their necessity to take COVID precautions. So it's been an impact on all of us as an industry. Um, I looked at the, um, the fee schedule explanation as put forth through um, the Housing Community Development's um, uh, uh, department chair. And I do question some of his numbers. Um, he's he's he documented uh, the, the, the rationale for the increase. And I, I looking at some of the numbers, I'll call to your attention the fact that in the admin office manager charge for new rentals for a half an hour of time, it was billed at $15.85 an hour. The same admin office manager charge for renewals for a half an hour was charged out at $18.25 an hour. So it looks like to me that's the same person being billed out at two different rates, depending on whether it's a renewal or a new high, a new registration. And in fact, I think the, a new registration should be higher, more expensive to do because you're in having to put more data into a system. Um, they should, so I think they should either be the same or because it looks like similar work and identical personnel. Um, number two, the, the, his explanation included an automatic um, amount of money for a, a reinspection if required. And I think the word if required needs to be addressed because I don't know how many times somebody has to have a reinspection of a new rental unit making that additional expense or, or that expense required. Um, and if a, a landlord needs to have a reinspection for some reason, then that should probably be a, an additional fee. Because if you are being inspected and you know somebody's coming, you should do the things that need to be done so that it's a once and done for everybody, including uh, the landlord. Um, so even, you know, even if the numbers that he, he identified were, were completely accurate, they still fit into the current schedule of $60 per unit. So I question the additional expense of $15 per unit. I know it was deferred from last year or it was in the budget for last year. Um, and I want to also, and it wasn't done. I'd also like to point out that at the end of this year, I know that COVID required them to not maybe use as many hours on the road or as many expenses, but the department also spent money trying to, to help in other ways that there was still a surplus in their budget as it was set up from last year because those budget surplus funds are what they want to transfer into the purchase of the new software equipment. So all in all, it just looks like to me, there was already enough money in their budget to do what they needed to do from last year. And they're asking for more money this year in each of in the categories, uh, in their categories, and additionally looking for additional funding in the areas of the rental management um, registration and licensing. I would also like to just put out on the table, just a thought, for future, um, I would kind of consider that it would make sense to go to a, a three-year fee, uh, only have renewals of one third of us each year. And it, the city is already set up into thirds the way the water bills are set up. So in some ways it would be a, a, a dividing lines between the way the water bills are already done as to who, which group is which group is which group. You've already got your section one, two, and three and have those renewals come due every three years that to me would save an, an enormous amount of labor and time, especially in the administrative end of things. And the fee would be three times whatever it would normally be. So 180 phased in over a three-year program. And eventually you'd have us all on a three-year cycle. So thank you for listening. I hope maybe that might help. I think we should save money wherever we can. And I see that as maybe a potential money saver and it would streamline some efficiencies. And um, I, I think it would, would probably make a lot of sense. So my thoughts, and I'd like for some, I hope all of you had a chance to look at the explanation that was presented defending the $75 rate, rate, rate 
because I feel that there were some, some areas of question in how those numbers were um, derived and how they would justify $75. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Bratton. And your, your uh, comments are, be, as always, will be taken under advisement when we have our discussions. Uh, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing for ordinance number 2662. I will uh, call for a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 2662. So, so moved. moved. Thank you. All right, I'll give it to Mr. Mr. Boda on the motion and Mrs. Gregory as a second. I'll call for a, uh, a motion and a second uh, to amend ordinance number 2662 as read by Mr. Sullivan. So moved. Ms. Jackson, is there a second? Second. Ms. Blake. No, Ms. Gregory. No, Gregory. Who was it, Mrs. Gregory? Sorry, mm -hmm. you two do sound alike. Last week it was you and I, Michelle. <laughs> okay, um, I'll call the motion, uh, the amendment to the motion. All those in favor of the amended motion on ordinance number 2662. Please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. I just, can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Is this the fee schedule we're voting for, for the, the, the rental units? I s yes. And, and we can't discuss this more tomorrow? We, yes, we can. I would prefer to do that. Pardon me? I would prefer to do that instead of vote tonight, unless. I know we, we have a budget. We, to... Yeah, we can discuss it tomorrow and we'll do, there's another reading of this. I, I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and that's great. There's another reading. I'm sure it'll go through for another reading, but I'm going to say no. Okay. Mrs. Gregory. Yes. And the chair votes yes on the amendment. The vote is four to one. Uh, I'll now call for a motion on the ordinance number 2662 as amended. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda. Nay. Ms. Jackson. Nay. Ms. Blake. Nay. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2662 is defeated by a vote of three to two. At this time, uh, we'll, I'll ask Mr. Sullivan to present the constant yield uh, tax rate. Absolutely. Uh, but before moving forward, my understanding is that uh, tonight's legislative agenda included these ordinances uh, proposed for, uh, uh, were scheduled for public hearing, correct? They were uh, all three ordinances, order, ordinance number 2661, ordinance number 2660, and ordinance number 2662 were approved for first reader 
at the mayor and council meeting scheduled for April 26th, correct? Correct. Correct. And they are presently scheduled for reading for second reader at the mayor and council meeting scheduled for May 24th, correct? That is correct. Okay. So to the extent there is any legislative decision made on either of those, or excuse me, any of those three ordinances, they are decisions made whether or not to approve the amendments that have been requested by the Department of Finance. They are not to uh, approve or disapprove the ordinances wholesale. To the extent they are motions made excuse me, approvals or dis disapprovals made to approve the ordinances wholesale, then uh, any ordinance that is rejected would have to be recirculated for first reader, which I don't believe is the intent of the legislative agenda tonight, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Thank you. So to the extent a motion has been made for ordinance number 2662, that was a motion to approve ordinance number 2662 as amended. So the That's amendment right. to ordinance number 2662 has failed. Correct. Okay. So ordinance number 2662 as approved for first reader will be on the legislative agenda for second reader on May 24th, correct? Um. I have to defer to Mrs. Mrs. Nichols. I believe that's correct. Yes, it, it will be on for second reading at that time. It uh, without okay. the amendments to the fee. The, the amendment okay. failed. Yes. Yeah, the amendment failed. Thank you. Just wanted to uh, provide that point of clarification in case there are any questions. The city of Salisbury proposes to increase property tax rates. With respect to the constant yield, for the tax year beginning July 1, 2021, the estimated real property assessable base will increase by 2.29% from 2,006,602,922 dollars to 2,052,600,456 dollars. If the city of Salisbury maintains the current tax rate of $0.9832 per $100 of assessment, real property tax revenues will increase by 2. Point, excuse me, will increase by 2.29%, resulting in $452,248 of new real property tax revenue. In order to fully offset the effect of increasing assessments, the real property tax rate should be reduced to $0.9612, the constant yield tax rate. The City of Salisbury is considering not reducing its real property tax rate enough to fully offset increasing assessments. The City proposes to adopt a real property tax rate of $0.98. $32 per $100 of assessment. This tax rate is 2.29% higher than the constant yield rate and will generate $442,248 in additional property tax revenues. Just a point of clarification, Mr. Sullivan, I think you said $442,248 and it's $452,248. Thank you. If I did, that was an error. All right. Thank you very much. Um, anybody that uh, wants to speak on this issue, uh, please identify yourself. I see no one. So uh, seeing that, I will open the public hearing and uh, I will also close the public hearing at this time. At this time, I'll call for a motion to approve ordinance number 2663. 
for the second reading. A move. Ms. Jackson, do I have a second? I second it. Ms. Blake seconded. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2663, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to amend chapter 15.26, rental of residential premises of the Salisbury City Code by deleting subsection 15.26.035, rent increases barred during states of emergency. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Salisbury desire to update the city of Salisbury Municipal Code, whereas the state of emergency was declared by Governor Hogan on March 5th, 2020, due to the pandemic known as COVID-19. Whereas Governor Hogan has issued multiple executive orders in an attempt to reduce the spread of COVID-19, resulting in the shutdown or slowdown of multiple businesses in the state of Maryland. Whereas due to the high unemployment rate, which was in effect during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Council of the City of Salisbury enacted Ordinance Number 2599, which amended Chapter 15.26 of the City of Salisbury Municipal Code to add provisions prohibiting landlords from increasing rent and rental fees during a state of emergency. Whereas since ordinance number 2599 was enacted, economic conditions in the city of Salisbury have improved and the city of Salisbury has not taken any action to enforce the prohibition on increases to rent and or rental fees provided in chapter 15.26.035 of the city of Salisbury municipal code. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Salisbury has concluded that it is in the best interest of the city of Salisbury to rescind the amendments to chapter 15.26 of the city of Salisbury municipal code enacted under ordinance number 2599 by deleting the provisions contained in chapter 15.26.035 of the city of Salisbury municipal code for the purpose of removing the prohibition on increases to rent and or rental fees during a state of emergency. And now therefore be it, or, be it enacted and ordained by the council of the city of Salisbury, the chapter 15.26 of the city of Salisbury municipal code be and is hereby amended by repealing chapter 15.26.035 in its entirety by deleting the crossed out language as follows. As you'll see, chapter 15.26.035 is deleted in its entirety. <clears throat> Be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury as follows. It is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all other provisions herein. Section three, it is further the intention of the mayor and council of the city of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law, such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so adjudged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. The recital set for set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in this section four. In section five, this ordinance shall take effect upon the final passage. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Questions or comments? Mr. Boda? No questions or comments. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Um, as I said before um, last week, I just hope that no one takes advantage of the other whether it be the landlords or the renters. And we get um, through this um, and do it in decency and in order. That's all I ask that everybody does what they're supposed to do and be considerate about everybody. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Ms. Blake? No questions or comments. Thank you. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. Thank you. I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2663 for the second reading, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2663 is approved by a vote of five to zero. I'll now entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2664 for the first reading. So moved. Ms. Jackson? Second. Mr. Boda? Mr. Sullivan? 
Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2664, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2021 general fund to appropriate funds for the purchase of the EnterGov software application. The City of Salisbury has determined the city requires the EnterGov software application to better run its local government operations and track activity on commercial and residential property. Whereas the EnterGov software will improve the city's ability to issue code violations and citations, manage building permits and other municipal permits, and complete building and or fire inspections for properties located within the city. Whereas the EnterGov software will also significantly improve the city's ability to complete reporting and analysis for ongoing municipal activity and will enable various city departments to communicate more effectively with one another across the central software platform. Whereas the city estimates the total cost of the EnterGov software application package to be $193,232 and estimates the total cost to city departments in the general fund to be $174,000. Whereas the appropriations necessary to execute the city's purchase of the EnterGov software application package for the reasons set forth here and above must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and the approval of four-fifths of the Council of the City of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 1, the City of Salisbury's fiscal year 2021 general budget be and is hereby amended as follows. Increase Housing and Community Development Department account number 25200-577036 by $45,000. Decrease Infrastructure and Development Department account number 31000-577036 by $45,000. Be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. Section two is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all provisions herein. Section three it is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be a judge and valid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law. Such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision shall be judged, and all provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 4, the recitals set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance. If this such recitals were specifically set forth at length in this section 4. Section 5, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of this final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Questions or comments? Mr. Boda? Uh, no questions or comments. Thank you. Ms. Jackson? No questions or comments. Thank you. Ms. Blake? No questions or comments. Thank you. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. Thank you. And I made my comments um, last week during the uh, work session. Um, I'll now call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2664 for the first reading, please signify by saying aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Mr. Voda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes nay. Ordinance number 2664 for the first reading is passed by a vote of four to one. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2665 for the second reading. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, there was two, two people speaking who? Ms. Jackson. Who, thank you, Ms. Jackson. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2665, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2021 general fund budget to appropriate funds to the Salisbury Fire Department's building account for HVAC repairs. Whereas the Salisbury Fire Department has experienced a failure of the HVAC condensing unit and internal coil, whereas the failure has resulted in a loss of the air conditioning throughout the entire Salisbury Fire Department building. Whereas the cost to cover the necessary repairs is estimated to be $31,945. Whereas the Salisbury Fire Department has determined that there are insufficient funds available in other accounts to transfer to cover the amount required to cover the cost of the aforesaid repair. 
Now, therefore, be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 1. City of Salisbury's fiscal year 2021 general fund budget B and is hereby amended as follows. Increase the current year surplus account number 01000-469810 by $31,945. Increase the Salisbury Fire Department building account number 24035-534301 by $31,945. Be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. It is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all other provisions herein. Section 3 is, the, is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be judged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law. Such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so judged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 4, the recitals set forth here above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance, as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in the section 4. In section 5, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Questions or comments? Mr. Boda? No questions or comments. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. No questions, no comments. Thank you, Ms. Blake. No questions or comments. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. No questions or comments. Thank you. I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2665 for the second reading, please signify by saying aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2665 for the second reading is approved by a vote of five to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2666 for the first reading. So moved. Second. Ms. Blake, this is Gregory. No, Ms. Jackson. I'm <laughs> Ms. Jackson seconded. I think what we'll do next time we do this to make it easy, just say second by Jackson, second by Blake, second by, okay? Yeah, it would be easier. Because I'm obviously not hearing anything, so. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2666, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to amend chapter 8.11 of the Salisbury City Code entitled the Fire Prevention Code for the purpose of adding new permits that are required to be obtained from the city of Salisbury Fire Marshal's Office. Whereas the ongoing application, administration, and enforcement of the Salisbury City Code demonstrates the need for periodic review, evaluation, and amendment. Whereas the city of Salisbury has adopted the state fire prevention code subject to local amendments. Whereas the city of Salisbury desires to amend chapter 8.11.020 of the Salisbury city code for the purpose of establishing additional specific permits that are required to be obtained from the city fire marshal's office. Now, therefore be it enacted and ordained by the council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. Section one. Chapter 8.11 of the Salisbury City Code, entitled the Fire Prevention Code, be and is hereby amended by repealing the crossed out language and adding the bolded and underlined language as follows. I direct your attention to subsections B6, entitled permits from fire marshal are required for the following. The word and is deleted. A semicolon is inserted in replace of the period after the word materials, and the following is new language added to Chapter 8.11 of the Salisbury City Code. To perform any fire hydrant or fire pump water flow test, and to sell consumer fireworks. Be it further ordained, excuse me, be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. 
Section 2, it is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that the provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all the provisions herein. Section 3 is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law, such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so adjudged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 4. The recitals set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in the section four. Section five, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Questions or comments? Mr. Boda? No questions or comments. Ms. Jackson? No questions or comments. Thank you. Ms. Blake? No questions or comments. Thank you. Mrs. Gregory. No questions or comments. Hearing none, I'll call the motion to approve ordinance number 2666 for the first reading. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Against, say nay. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2666 for the first reading is passed by a vote of five to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2667 for the first reading. So moved, Boda. Second, Jackson. <laughs> Mr. Boda, Ms. Jackson. I like that, that's good. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2667, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury to amend Chapter 15.26 of the Salisbury City Code entitled Rental of Residential Premises by adding a new section 15.26.045 entitled Fair Chance Housing. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury desired to update the Salisbury City Code to adopt a fair chance housing policy to reduce the barriers to housing for individuals with a criminal history. Whereas mass incarceration is a national and local crisis, and restoring the rights of people affected by mass incarceration is a national priority. Whereas the U.S. Department of Justice has estimated one in every three adults in the United States has either an arrest or conviction record. Whereas homelessness is a critical issue in the city of Salisbury. Formerly incarcerated people are disproportionately affected by homelessness, which can prevent a formerly incarcerated person from getting a job, from visiting with their children, and from fulfilling other needs that are fundamental to reintegrating with the community after incarceration. And whereas many landlords and landlords agents require a criminal background check as part of the application process for rental housing and information obtained from that criminal background check, may be used to deny housing to otherwise qualified applicants. Whereas the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has recognized the discriminatory impact the criminal background checks can have on homelessness and my minority communities across the United States and have imposed guidelines addressing the use of criminal background checks during the applicant screening process. Whereas notwithstanding the aforesaid HUD guidelines, Reliance on criminal background checks by landlords creates additional barriers for previously incarcerated individuals and their families to access affordable housing. Whereas for those persons with limited income and time constraints, the lack of transparency during the applicant screening process creates further difficulties and costs that could be avoided. Whereas the Council of the City of Salisbury has concluded that it is in the best interest of the city to increase transparency by landlords and landlords agents to allow applicants to better understand the necessary qualifications considered to lease or rent a residential dwelling unit, and accordingly to amend the Salisbury City Code to require landlords and landlords agents provide a transparency disclosure for rental applicants. Now therefore be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury as follows. Section 1, Chapter 15.26 of the Salisbury City Code, entitled Rental of Residential Premises be and is hereby amended by adding the bolded and underlined language as follows. Chapter 15.26.045. 
fair chance housing policy. Definition. In addition to those definitions set forth in Chapter 15.26.030, the following words have the following meaning. Agent means a person authorized to make contract or authorize a lease or to charge rent for a dwelling unit on behalf of a landlord. Applicant means a person who seeks information about visits or applies to rent or lease a dwelling unit or who seeks to be added as a household member to an existing lease for a dwelling unit. Arrest means a record from any jurisdiction that does not result in a conviction. It includes information indicating that a person has been questioned, apprehended, taken into custody or detained or held for investigation by a law enforcement police or prosecutorial agency, and or charged with, indicted, or tried and acquitted for any felony, misdemeanor, or other criminal offense. Background check report means any report regarding an applicant's criminal history, including but not limited to those produced by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Maryland State Police, other law enforcement agencies, courts, or any consumer reporting or tenant screening agency. Conviction means a record from any jurisdiction that includes information indicating that a person has been convicted of a felony or misdemeanor or other criminal offense for which the person was placed on probation, fined, imprisoned, and or parole. Criminal history means information transmitted orally or in writing or by any other means and obtained from any source, including but not limited to the person to whom the information pertains, a government agency or a background check report regarding one or more convictions or arrests, a conviction that has been sealed, dismissed, vacated, expunged, voided, invalidated, or otherwise rendered inoperative by judicial action or by statute, a determination or adjudication in the juvenile justice system a matter considered in or processed through the juvenile justice system, or participation in or completion of a diversion or a deferral of judgment program. Landlord means the owner of a dwelling unit. Lease means any agreement written or verbal that establishes or modifies the terms, conditions, rules, regulations, or other provisions concerning the use and occupancy of a dwelling unit. Owner means one, any person having a legal or equitable interest in the dwelling unit, including but not limited to a mortgagee and an assignee of rent. Two, any person who alone or jointly or severally with others shall have the charge, care, or control of any structure as executor, administrator, trustee, or guardian of the estate of the owner. Or three, any person whose name appears on the property tax bill. Rent means the amount charged for the right to possession and use of a dwelling unit. Subsection B, requirements for a landlord and a landlord's agent. One, a landlord and a landlord's agent shall disclose to an applicant the charge or cost of the application for lease or rent. If a background check report will be conducted, and if so, how fair, excuse me, how far back the background check report can extend, referred to as the look back period. And any exclusionary criteria that you use to screen an applicant before the landlord or the landlord's agent may charge an applicant a fee to apply to lease or rent. A landlord and a landlord's agent shall also disclose on all promotional materials and advertisements related to renting or leasing a dwelling unit, their policies and practices related to a background check report, and shall provide notice of the requirements set forth in B1 below in their application materials on their websites and at any rental or leasing offices. Three, the landlord and a landlord's agent orders a background check report for an applicant. They shall provide a copy of that report to the applicant. Subsection C, no conflict with state or federal law. This chapter is not intended to conflict with state or federal law. If there is a conflict between the provision, provisions of federal or state law in this chapter, federal or state law shall control. Subsection D, effective date. The provisions of this chapter shall take effect upon 30 days after final adoption of this ordinance. The city shall cause notice of this ordinance to be mailed to all landlords subject to chapter 15.26 within 90 days of final adoption of this ordinance. Subsection E, enforcement. 
failure of a landlord or landlord agent to comply with Chapter 15.26.045B shall result in the issuance of a municipal infraction, shall be subject to a fine not to exceed $500 per violation. If further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury as follows. Is the intention of the mayor and council of the city of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all other provisions herein? Section three is further the intention of the mayor and council of the city of Salisbury that the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law. Such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so judged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section four, the recitals set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in this section four. And section five, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, questions or comments, Mr. Boda? Uh, no questions or comments. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. No questions, no comments. Thank you, Ms. Blake. No questions or comments. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. No questions or comments. I, I have one question. Did we not talk about removing the requirement of, for advertising? Yes, Mr. President, that's what I referenced earlier before the meeting started. Uh, there seems to be a mix up. Uh, I'm gonna take blame for it for not getting the updated version in the packet. Uh, some, some kinks we have to work out here. Um, but uh, I've already emailed it to Kim. I, I do have to loop in Michael. Uh, I think that was where I went wrong last time. Um, so that language is amended in the, the version that you'll see uh, in two weeks that will not require um, that um, language to be disclosed on advertising materials. Okay. Um, now we, we have two readings so we can make those changes. We can approve it. Uh, with those changes in mind and then just make sure next uh, the next meeting for the second reading that the we'll have to uh, prove the amended ordinance correct yes Mr. president okay that's what we'll do then all right uh, there's no more comments or questions i'll call the motion all those in favor of ordinance number uh, 2667 for the first reading Please signify by saying aye. All those opposed, say nay. Mr. Boda. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2667 for the first reading is passed by a vote of five to zero. Uh, that concludes our agenda for this evening. And at this point, I will open the floor for public comments. Jack, we have uh, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I will unmute. Got... Yeah, that's fine. Lynn Bratton, uh, resident of City Salisbury, 303 South Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland. I would like to comment briefly that I, I have noted the, the much of the voting and while I don't disagree that there's probably need for an increased um, or an improved data management system for the city of Salisbury, there were many comments that uh, were questioned at one of your budget hearings uh, concerning the, um, the, the, the program that you seem to be moving forward on. And as a resident, I would appreciate a further discussion with some of Mr. Heath's concerns and questions that he brought forward, especially the, the lack of an RFP to see what other possible um, programs might be uh, available and uh, that could meet the needs. I know that there was a statement that said, well, these were the people that really would be the ones that would be able to do it. But there's a huge, huge, huge com computer industry out there with software. And then the second would be the, the ongoing expense of maintaining that software for the ensuing years was gonna be an additional expense over the current system that you're currently using. and at, uh, you know, and, and again, how many departments are going to benefit from it and what are the actual um, savings and cost to time and energy and efficiency and then improved efficiencies. So I, I agree with some of the questions he offered at one of your earlier sessions. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. 
Anyone else in the public? Colin, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, no, my my well, my concerns were were the promotional materials, but that got clarified uh, at the end. Uh, I will say um, that some clarification on on two six six seven on the last the the enforcement. What what is going to be an infraction um, if you fail to print it on your application? Is it one infraction for every application, or is it you know how how would you classify an infraction? Uh, might be a little clarification there um and then maybe a some some draft language from the uh the attorney's office on what they'd want to see as far as uh legal um uh on the application itself of what would be a a permissible uh language for uh for the application and the website so those are my my two questions on that one Okay, we will. Uh, we will. By the time the second reading, we'll get you. We'll get the answers for those. So, thank you. Thank you, Alan. I think you had your hand up. Yeah, Alan Goodman. I'm a property owner within the city limits. I'm just wondering if if the city is um, as part of two six six seven, if the city is willing to um, absorb some of the additional liability that we're going to take on. Um, you know the the legal system is made up of several parts, and the judicial part um, arrests and and convicts people. And the thought process is we need that for public safety. And I'm a little hesitant to um, uh, promote having somebody rent from me who has a history of being arrested, even if not convicted, for assault on landlords, for example. Um, and uh, I'm going to have additional liabilities if this person brings harm to my neighbors or their neighbors at this point. And just this, this, uh, I'm all in favor of fair housing, but um, you just have to ask yourself, who do you want your neighbors to be? And is it fair to force other people to have to take these as, as their neighbors if you don't want them as yours? That's, that's all I have to say about that, uh, that piece. Ms. Glantz? Well, I, I do just, I know we don't normally address public comments, but there's. Yeah. Uh, I, was just, I was just asking for your <laughs> comments. Uh, well, my comments is uh, to recommend that, uh, uh, I didn't catch Alan's last name, but to reread it, because I think his opinion is, um, his thoughts on the matter are, are misconstrued. Other than that, um, again, just want to thank everybody for uh, the support today. And uh, hopefully we continue to support the, the family and, and community of Del Mar moving forward. Um, and then this morning, I think Mira will like this. Um, hopefully we can uh, continue to, to push forward with vaccine uh, uh, appointments. I heard in, in, uh, on the radio this morning in New York that they're uh, going to breweries and giving away free beers uh, for vaccines. So I think, uh, I think the folks in New York are onto something and we should talk to the hospital and the health department on, uh, on that sort of partnership. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. Uh, we'll check with the council now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boda, quite any comments for good of the order? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, uh, the formula works. If you do two beers after your shot, or you know, it 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 works. There's no issues. Um, you know, again, you know, like we've been saying, our our hearts uh, go up to our neighbor to the north, and our prayers are with uh, that, those families up there struggling. So that's all I wanted to say tonight. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Boda. Ms. Jackson. Well. I didn't get to say it last Monday, but happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers that are in the city of Salisbury and Wacomico County. Um, and also I see what Colin, I was getting ready to say it just a few moments ago when I got the opportunity that you can be 12 and 15 years old and get your vaccine now. So parents, please protect your kids. That's all I have to say. Stay safe, wear your mask, still wear your mask sanitize and social distance and have a great evening. Thank you, April. Angela? Um, just as always, if you're healthy enough, please donate blood, please. We're very, very, we're, we're beyond low. 
we're in a critical stage. Thank you. This is Gregory. Uh, just please go get your vaccine, um, especially with the kids being able, 12, 12 to 15 being eligible to get it. Please take your kids to get vaccinated, you know, so, so they can have fun with their friends this summer. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, um, I concur with everything that's been said so far. Um, I, I wish everybody a, a good week. I think the weather is going to be good, so get outside and walk. Uh, stay healthy, and uh, we will see you uh, next Monday evening. With that, our uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.